everyone, I'm Jolene Teo, and I'm a customer engineer at Google Cloud. And welcome back to the Google Cloud Technical Guides for Startups, where we are creating a series of videos for technical enablement to help startups to start, build, and grow their businesses successfully and sustainably on Google Cloud. In our previous episode, we showed you how you can get started on Google Cloud. Today, we'll be moving on to our third stop, Streamlining Application Development. We'll be covering first the basics of what exactly is serverless. And following that, I'll be introducing to you the portfolio of solutions available and when to choose which. I'll then share with you a little bit more about Cloud Run and also run through a demo as well. Right after, I'll be sharing with you some tips on how you can optimize both performance as well as cost. And last but not least, we'll be running through a sample application of an e-commerce platform together as well as a customer case study. We'll then wrap up with some of the links that you can follow up with right after this video. So come on now, let's explore the land of the serverless together. First of all, we need to get our basics right. What does serverless mean? When you make use of a serverless infrastructure, it means that you're able to deploy and scale your applications more quickly and securely in a fully managed environment. This also means that your developers can focus on writing the code instead of having to worry about the infrastructure. This leads to faster time to market, which is definitely important for startups. On top of that, your workloads will automatically scale according to the traffic and you only need to pay for what you consume. All in all, this enables faster and more secure development, deployment, as well as operations. Now that we have the basics sorted out, let me share with you how Google Cloud can help you to streamline your application development. So first up, we have Cloud Run. Now Cloud Run is really great for running any form of applications or containers in a fully managed environment. Next, we have Cloud Functions, which is definitely great for any event-driven applications. And last but not least, we have App Engine, which also can help to run applications in a fully managed environment. I'm pretty sure you must be wondering when to choose which. Well, I've got your back. Here are some of the most common use cases being compiled together for you to help you with your product decision making. And now, we're going to zoom in to the latest edition as well as a very popular one, which is Cloud Run. Cloud Run enables you to run your containerized applications on a managed compute platform quickly and securely, bringing you from containers to production within seconds. Write your code your way using your favorite languages such as Python, Ruby, Go, and many more. Not only that, with Cloud Run, you only have to pay for the resources that your startup consumes. And this means that you won't have to pay for over-provisioned resources. Cloud Run is also built upon the open standard Knative, which ensures the portability of your applications. And all of the above allows you to build your applications the way you want to. Right, it's about time to give you a tour. Now on to the demo. In this demonstration, we'll be creating a Cloud Run service with the use of a container image being built. We'll then explore versioning as well as traffic splitting. Now, for today, we'll be making use of a sample application, which is a simple meme generator service. How it works is that it takes in an upper text, a bottom text, as well as an image in the URL bar in order to create a meme. Now, you can follow along with your own application or make use of a sample one in the description box below. Alright, let's jump into the first two sections. First, let's begin by taking a look at the application code. Here, you can see the application code and remember that you can code in any of your favorite languages such as Python, Ruby, Go and many more. And over here, we can see the meme generator service works by first taking in an upper text, a bottom text as well as an image URL in order to create and generate a meme. And next, over here, we also have a Docker file that defines the base image where it's all being packaged into a container. Next, I'm going to show you how easy it is to build the container image by using the builds command. All right, we're going to speed this up part a little bit until it's being done. And now it's done. And now we're going to deploy this onto Cloud Run. Alright, now we're going to navigate over to Cloud Run. 
And here we are right now in Cloud Run. And to create a new Cloud Run service, you can simply click on the Create Service button. And over here, you can give your service a name, select the region, as well as select the container image that you want to deploy. In this case, we'll be selecting the container image that we have just built. Following that, you can just click on Create in order to deploy. Now, we have our container image running on Cloud Run. And here, we have our application up and running. As you can see, you have all of the information that you may need right at your fingertips. From the managing of your revisions, which we'll get into shortly, metrics, logs, and many more, making it really easy for your startup to manage. And right now, we're going to check out our application simply by clicking on the URL. And here, we can see that our service is up and running. We can simply click on an example to see how the application works. And now, we're going to test it out too, simply by adding in and editing the upper text, bottom text, as well as image URL to generate a new meme. And there we have it. Next, I'm going to show you how easy it is to deploy a new version of the application. All right, so now we're going to head back to the application code and edit it a little by including a hello as well as a welcome message. We're going to quickly click save. And once we're done, we're going to rebuild this container image. We're going to speed this part up a little until the container image is being built as well. And we're done. And now we're going to head back to Cloud Run and redeploy this new revision. As you can see, it's really simple and you can easily select the latest container image that you have just built and deploy. And immediately, we're done. You can see that we have our new version now up and running on Cloud Run. Now moving on to the third part of our demo. What if you wanted different versions to serve different levels of traffic? Let's take a final look at traffic splitting. With Cloud Run, it is extremely easy to manage your traffic for the different revisions that you may have. Simply click on Manage Traffic, and over here, you can fill out the form to the different levels of desired traffic for your different revisions. And with that, we are done with the demo. Over here, you saw how easy it was to not only deploy on Cloud Run, but to also manage your revisions as well as manage your traffic. Now, you may wonder, what are the most important things to take note of for cost as well as performance? In this section, we'll be covering the best practices for cost optimization as well as performance optimization. I'll be putting some links in the description box below as well for your further reading. To optimize performance, first of all, remember to specify the minimum number of container instances you want to be kept warm and ready to serve requests. Secondly, don't forget to also try to minimize the number of dependencies as well as the size of them to make sure that your service is a lean one. Thirdly, lazily load code which is infrequently being used if your language supports it. And also, make use of global variables as well. The initialization of global variables occurs during the startup, which can severely increase the code start time. Now, one great example of a variable that is expensive to initialize would be the database connections. Database connections are great to keep as global variables. And finally, make use of minimal container images. Larger container images can increase your security vulnerabilities and this is because they contain more than what your code needs. As for cost optimization, setting the right number of maximum instances depending on your traffic as well as desired level of request latency can help you to optimize your overall cost. Secondly, it is also important to take note and optimize your CPU as well as RAM. CPU usage is generally a huge contributor towards your overall costs. Thirdly, it is also highly important to make use of billing alerts as well as labels. Budget alerts provide an early warning signal to unexpected increases in your bill. And as for labels, labels allow you to assign a simple text value to particular resources and this allows you to understand which are the most significant contributors towards your overall bill to allow you to take action on them. On top of that, implementing 
basic local caching where a local in-memory copy of frequently loaded or generated data is being kept can produce significant and dramatic improvements to both cost as well as performance. And last but not least, do not forget to always make sure you measure the effectiveness of your changes so that you can keep track of them and continue to improve and optimize the costs. Now, let's take a look at a fictitious use case of a sample e-commerce application. When an order is being first placed on the front end, which is being deployed on Cloud Run, Cloud Run receives the request and sends it over to PubSub, which is an asynchronous messaging service. The subsequent microservices, which are also deployed on Cloud Run, can then subscribe to these PubSub events. These microservices can then make calls to the other parts of the architecture, as you can see the examples over here. And if we wanted to take a look at a real-life example, we have Arabesque AI. Arabesque AI provides AI-driven asset management and amongst other incredible results, they were able to reduce their server costs with Cloud Run. And not only that, they were also able to automate infrastructure management, resulting in higher productivity. All in all, Google Cloud is able to help you with the streamlining of your application development. Now, I hope that today's session has given you a good understanding and overview as well as how you can get started. And after this video, if you are keen to find out more and you cannot get enough of application development, feel free to check out the suggestions here as well as the links in the description below. And in the next episode, you will be able to learn more about containerization, how to deploy on the Google Kubernetes engine, optimization of performance, as well as look through a sample architecture, as well as a customer case study. Alright, and that's a wrap for today. See you in the next video.